We recently returned from a trip that I was able to photograph at some really interesting locations. And after doing quite a bit of research, I was looking for a camera that I can take along that was very compact and lightweight in size and that I want to have with me just about all the time. And that camera that I chose out of looking at several different ones was the Fujifilm X70. What an amazing camera. And I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you some of the images that were taken. And this is actually meant not to be a technical tutorial because you can get all the specs on Fuji's website and there's also some good reviews online that you can look at. However, some are a little bit biased, but that's okay because I'm going to give you my opinion about this camera and some of the things that I really like about it. So it may be biased as to what I was looking for, but then again, it could also show you what you can do with this camera and then who this camera may be for. So I want to give you a little warning. On this trip, my wife said to me, you know, you're loving this camera a little bit too much. So if you're going to go on a trip using this camera, make sure you spend a little bit more time with your spouse or your mate, whoever you go on a trip with, and just pay a little bit more attention to that person. So let's talk about some of the things that I was looking for when I was researching this camera. Number one, I wanted something very compact that I can carry with me, uh, and it had no problem fitting into my cargo shorts pants, very comfortable. And I also wanted something that was high quality, and this camera definitely has that beautiful finish, excellent build quality, and very lightweight. Another factor was the sensor size. I was really amazed that a camera of this size had a large enough sensor to give me the type of quality image I was looking for. And the sensor in this camera is an APS-C CMOS sensor. Just about the same size that's in my Nikon D7200. I say just about because the sensor in this Fuji X70 is just a little bit, it's actually 0.1 millimeters larger. So, I'm able to get the kind of image quality that I was used to getting in my Nikon bodies or other large camera bodies. The other thing that I wanted was a tilt screen. Once you start using one, you sort of get attached to it because many times I'll be shooting down low and I'll be shooting up or I want to raise the camera up real high and I'll aim the screen down or you can have the camera on a monopod and get it way up there and you're still able to see what you're getting. So to me that was actually important and this camera has all that and it's just it was just amazing and it met my expectations and then some. And the Fuji also has an 18.5 millimeter fixed lens on here which is equivalent to a 28 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. And even though it has a fixed lens on here, it's wide enough to do outstanding uh, landscape photography or street photography. And you can even do it for certain types of portrait photography. You know, instead of just doing the head and shoulder type thing that everybody does, well, if you want to show us some of the environment, because I did this quite a bit actually, say for instance you're photographing a pilot, and instead of just getting a head and shoulder with maybe just a little bit in the background, why not take in some of the environment? Like as an example, he would be there maybe in front of his cockpit, so you would see the cockpit behind him, or if it's an executive, or an inventor, or a CEO of a company, you can also incorporate what that person does. So a, using a, a wide-angle lens is actually a great way to incorporate some of the surrounding areas. And it has a decent battery life of about 330 shots. There was at one point I ran low, because I was shooting all day and there was another time I was getting low but I made it but if you're going to be out there shooting all day I recommend getting at least one maybe two extra batteries. 
Something else I really liked about this camera are the controls. If you look on top, you can see the shutter speed dial. And it's got a red A there. That's for aperture priority. And all the other numbers are your shutter speeds. The top speed on the dial here is a four thousandth of a second. And it's really quick to make your changes. The other dial on the right side is for your exposure compensation. If you want to give it a little bit over or a little bit under, it's very fast to do that. You don't have to go into the menu and, and hunt for it. Now once you have it off the A for aperture priority, you're set to shoot manual. And here you can see that it's set for a 60th of a second. And if you look at the lens there, the lens opening is at f5.6. Now if you're not that familiar with shooting manual, I really recommend that you learn. Take a class locally or if not, you can learn it somewhere online. It's just something that if you're really serious about photography, and it's not that difficult. So once you learn to set your exposure where it needs to be, you're going to get a really great quality image. And in case you're photographing something that's very, very light, you're not going to wash out those highlights. Now the X70 has a 3 inch screen, and that's actually a nice size for this compact size camera. And you can adjust your screen several different ways. This way shows that you're actually setting your camera down and then you're adjusting the screen so your camera is balanced so you could take the photograph if your camera is sitting on a table and it's still going to be sturdy just in case you don't have a tripod handy and you may need to use a slower shutter speed and you can also flip the screen up if you're going to be doing a selfie or you're doing a video and then you can actually see yourself on that screen all right, so enough about talking about this camera. Let's go have a look at some of the images that this amazing camera can produce. So here we're looking at an image that's straight out of the camera. Now Fuji does offer some neat film simulation modes. I believe there's 11 settings. And the one that I use the most is the Velvia which increases the contrast just a little bit more and, and it might give you just a little more color saturation. So that's what you're looking at right here. And on the next one here, Fuji also has what's called advanced filters. And I use these on occasion. And the one that I use the most for landscape photography is pop color. And what the pop color does is it saturates your colors and, and also increases the contrast even more than the Velvia film simulation does. So you can see the beautiful colors that you're getting. And this is straight out of the camera. And another filter that I use on occasion, as you can see here, it's called the dynamic tone. It just really exaggerates the contrast and the color even more. Let's look at the difference that you can get from using some of these advanced filters. Now here we're looking at, this is normal, using just the Velvia film simulation. And then also next, we set the advanced filter to dynamic tone. And look how it just exaggerates those clouds, adds a lot of punch, adds more saturation and contrast to the image. So looking at some of the landscape at the hotel that we stayed at, and again, this first one here is just normal, uh, using the film simulation again of Velvia. And then we set the advanced filter to pop color. Now you can see the difference. See the pop color, it just adds more color, saturates the color a little bit more. And then for extreme saturation and higher contrast, I set the filter to dynamic tone. And of course, you may not want to use these advanced filters all the time, but if you get some interesting cloud formations, then you might want to add a little bit more impact by trying some of these filters. And on the next image here, I use the partial color, which makes everything black and white except for the color that you choose. And in this particular case, I chose a blue. Uh, I believe there's purple, blue, green, and so on. 
but this way it just makes everything black and white except for the blue like you see here. And another filter I use on occasion is called a toy camera. It gives kind of an interesting look. So this again is how it looks coming right out of the camera. And then on the next one here, I just brought it into Photoshop, cropped it a little bit closer, and just added a little bit of brightness to the buildings. And I vignetted the sides in a corner slightly. And then here we're using the dynamic tone, and this is how it looks straight out of the camera again. And you can even take it a step further. So here we went into Photoshop, made it into a black and white, and gave it just a little bit of a brown tone. So this way you can add even more variety to your images. And then here's another example using the dynamic tone, and then making it into a black and white. And yes, the Fuji X70 also takes some interesting panorama images like you see here. So there it is. That's the reason that I chose the Fuji X70 out of all the amazing cameras out there. And there are quite a bit actually. But this fit the bill for what I needed. Compact size, large enough sensor to give me professional quality images, easy to travel with, a great build quality to it. Also, I do want to mention before we say goodbye that this camera also has some great accessories that you can get. Number one, it does have a wide conversion lens which makes your lens into a 21 millimeter and that's a nice touch. In travel photography, I always like shooting landscapes or architecture with a wide angle lens and this makes it even more dramatic, so if you want to switch that. And also, the thing about this camera and other small cameras is that there's no viewfinder to it. But you can also get an optional external viewfinder for this. And that would be really outstanding. So you can use this for a lot of your work. I'm not saying that this may be the only camera that you may need, but it could certainly be a great travel camera. And... If you need it, you have the option of getting that optical viewfinder and also that 21 millimeter wide conversion lens. Not to mention, you can also put a stereo mic that gets mounted onto the hot shoe that you plug into the side of your camera when you're doing movies. And speaking of movies, I'm going to see if I can put something on here, maybe as a part two to this segment, on doing just movies or video. I know that some people didn't really rate this camera all that great for doing video, but there are things that you can do to make the video very, very good, and I'll see if I can post that on there. So just look for the link underneath the description. Thank you for watching.